the storm and bring the birds of life. I love so much to see the revolution somehow. <laughs> Hey guys, it's your Sunday school teacher Debbie. I just want to say that I miss you guys so much and I hope you guys are doing well. I'm super excited for today's lesson and we're going to be learning about how Jesus is our good shepherd. So you guys might be wondering, what does a shepherd mean, right? Well, a shepherd is a person who cares, protects, and guides their sheep. And actually in the Bible, it talks about sheep quite a lot. You guys might be wondering, why does it talk about sheep so much, right? Well, actually, when it talks about sheep, it's actually referring to God's people, which is us, right? So, in what we're going to read today, it's gonna, we're going to hear the words like sheep and shepherd. And I want us to remember that sh the sh when it talks about sheep, it's talking about us. And when it talks about the shepherd, it's talking about Jesus, right? Because he cares and protects and guides us. So with that being said, let's open our Bibles to John 10, verses 7 to 16. And how about every time we hear the word sheep, we point to ourselves. And every time we hear the word shepherd, let's point to Jesus, okay? Alright, let's start. Okay, so let's start from verse 7. So Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the door for the sheep. And all the people who come before me were thieves and robbers. The sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. The 
the person who enters through me will be saved. He will be able to come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. But I came to give life, life in all its fullness. So I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. The worker who is paid to keep the sheep is different from the shepherd who owns them. So when the worker sees a wolf coming, he runs away and leaves the sheep alone. Then the wolf attacks the sheep and scatters them. So I want to pause right here. So we, here we see the comparison between a good shepherd and a paid worker. And so we see here, a paid worker doesn't own the sheep, right? They just kind of look after the sheep. And here in the Bible, it says, if a wolf were to come, they would run right away, right? Because they don't really care for the sheep. But here we see that the good shepherd would give his life for the sheep because that's how much he cares for the sheep. So let's continue. Starting from verse 13. The man runs away because he is only a paid worker. He does not really care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father. I give my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not in the flock here. I must also bring them also. They will listen to my voice and there will be one flock and one shepherd. The father loves me because I give my life. I give my life so that I can take it back again. Okay. I kind of went ahead a little bit. But the ending of verse 16 is, I have other sheep and that are not in the flock here. I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice and there will be one flock and one shepherd. So one f a flock is basically like... Um, a herd of sheep so like a lot a crowd of sheep right so yeah that is the end and let's talk about certain things that we can take away from this okay so some things that we can take away from what we just read is that Jesus is our shepherd and that we are his sheep not only that but he cares for us he protects us and he guides us and we see that when it talked about if a wolf were to come a paid worker would run right away right but jesus our good shepherd he would lay his life down and we know that because he laid his life down on the cross right which is the biggest sacrifice so a verse that i want to leave with you guys today is found in psalms chapter 23 verses 1 and it says the lord is my shepherd i will always have everything i need so that's all for today and um Let's close in prayer. So let's bow our heads and let's close our eyes. Father God, um, we just thank you. We thank you for being our good shepherd. We thank you for just loving us, caring for us, protecting us, guiding us. We just thank you for it all. Um, I pray that today we just learn just more about you. Um, I pray that you bless the rest of our day, the rest of our week. And we just love you, Father. And I pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. So that's all for today, you guys. I hope you guys stay safe and have a great week. And see you guys next week. Bye. I'm going to sing a song that's about how God is faithful in all its ways.
I'm just going to pray for you guys. Dear Jesus, I just pray that you uh, bless these kids. I pray that they, they listen to your word, God. They listen to Pastor Linda, what she's saying, God. I pray that just they just reflect on it, God, and they they turn to you and they ask, they seek your, for your glory and your faith and your holiness, God. I just pray that you bless them, God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hi, everyone. We're going to look at uh, Mark chapter 6 today, verses 30 to 44. It's a story that we all know, and it's about helping others. It's about helping others. And here we have uh, a very familiar story. It's about Jesus. Now, remember the very, very first lesson, one of the first lessons we had, he was both God and man. This was another sign that he was man because he said to his disciples, let's go get some rest. He'd been talking to his disciples. They had been busy. They sat down and discussed what had been happening and what had been taken all across the country and everything. And so uh, he said to them, uh, come aside. Let's go by ourselves." And let's rest. He had to rest. And he said, because there's people around us all the time. And of course, for Jesus and his disciples to get away, it was tricky. Because the people were always there with him and wanted him to pray for them. And he wanted, they wanted the miracles in their life and they wanted to hear the teaching. So he said, okay, let's get out on the boat. Let's get on the boat. So they got on the boat, and they were out in the water. But, of course, all the people saw them, and they followed them, and they ran ahead of them. They ran into the village where they thought he would land. And so uh, they were running on foot, and they arrived, and they came together to see Jesus. Now, when he came out of the boat, he got out, he saw the great multitude he saw all the people, hundreds and hundreds of people. And he saw them. He saw them. And he looked at them. And as he was looking at them, he says, you know what? They're like sheep with no shepherd. And you've got to remember, he is the great shepherd. And he looked at them, and they're just wandering out there. They're just like little lost sheep. We need to talk to them. We need to teach them. And you know what? This is a verse that I like. I like it a lot. It said, Jesus was moved with compassion. He was moved with compassion. That really means he was moved with great love for these people. He saw them. And he realized that they had a need in their life. And the day went on and he asked, uh, was preaching and he was teaching and they were performing miracles. One of the disciples said, hey, you know what? It's getting late, Jesus. These people, we don't have any food. They don't have any food. Are they going to stay out here all night and be hungry? What's going to happen? What's up? What's up? And so they said, what do you want us to do? Do you want us to go into town and buy it? Some food for them. It won't feed very many because we only got a little bit of money. And Jesus, he said, what are we going to do, the disciples? You know what Jesus said? Look after them. You, you look after them. And they were sort of stopped for a moment. How are we going to look after them? He says, what do you got? What do you got? And they said, well... They looked around, all the crowd. He says, the only thing we can come up with is this little boy's lunch. Got this little boy's lunch. He has five loaves of bread, two fish. And they, what are we going to do with this? Jesus said, okay, go out, put 50 people here, 50 people there, Hundred people here, set them in little groups, set them in little groups, and we're going to feed them. So he took the little boy's lunch. Remember, the little boy gave his lunch up. What do we give up? 
the things that we give up for Jesus. He gave up and he t gave thanks. He thanked God and he broke it and he kept breaking it and feeding it and put it in baskets and went out and fed all the people. Now the Bible says there were 5,000 men, but you got to remember a lot of them were married. A lot of them had children. So they figured there was probably fifteen to 20,000 people he fed that day. And you know what? I find this interesting. I always found this interesting. How many baskets were left over? Twelve. Do you think he gave each one of the disciples as a reminder of who he was and that he could supply the needs of them as well as the people. What about us? But Jesus, he looked at them. He was moved with compassion. He was moved with love. Now, what I want you to do now is, I just want you to close your eyes. Just close. I know it's hard when you got in a family and everybody's up. Just close your eyes. And I want you to think of someone that you could help. I want you to think of someone that might be lonely. What could you do? Could it be the, the older lady next door, write her a little note, ask her how she is? Is there somebody you know that might be worried and you can say, hey, I've been praying for you? How can you help them? Especially in this COVID-19, we have to keep our distance, but there are different ways that we can help people. I heard of one today where uh, the kids wrote on stones, scripture verses, and they passed it around and put it on the steps of all their neighbors. And, that would, and a lot of the people re uh, received it. Most of them did. And they were pleased and they were encouraged by these verses of Scripture. Think about it. Who can you help today? Who can you be moved with compassion? Who can I be moved with compassion to help during this time of difficulty for all of us? Think about it. Pray about it. And then, this week, do something about it. Have a great week. And remember... Help someone else.
Yeah.